Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to revisit uh, clearing snow off of the solar panels and maybe even whether it's worth it. Um, I have a grid tie system, and it's using microinverters. We've got eight solar panels per row, three rows for 24 solar panels, and each of these microinverters peaks at 225 watts, so it's a 5,400 watt system maximum. Uh, we are using a Snowjo RJ204M roof rake to remove some of the snow here. It snowed about five inches the other night. That was the actual accumulation on the driveway. The accumulation on the solar panels was a little bit less than that, uh, probably partly because of the wind and partly because the solar panels are on an angle. Uh, just watching here, my brother Wayne's giving me a hand pulling off the snow. The roof's at about a 30 degree angle and it's it's a little bit of work to pull the snow off. It's a little bit of a workout, um, kind of uh, like paddling a kayak or something. It's a good workout for your shoulders. So the snow, of course, has to go somewhere. And as it comes off the roof, um, unfortunately, it's going right onto my driveway uh, because the driveway is on the south side. Uh, so this actually did take a little while to do. And the other thing to keep in mind here is that getting to that third row of solar panels is kind of a stretch. Uh, an able-bodied six-foot man can do it, but only maybe about the bottom half of the highest row of solar panels there. So even if all the other solar panels are, are cleared, uh, the top is only going to be about half cleared. Um, I have found that microinverters definitely help on this type of a system. Uh, again, though, once the snow is off, it just ends up being on the ground and then that snow has to be removed, uh, at least in this case. Um, you know, maybe if your uh, sidewalk or driveway or something was on a, a side other than the south, it wouldn't be an issue for you, but just showing how it works at my house. So was it worth it? Well, the next day it was nice and sunny, a uh, beautiful clear blue sky, cold, about 8 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and any of the thin snow melted off very quickly, just leaving the big chunks of snow. But all that really matters is how much energy we're getting out of the system. So let's go to the Enlighten software, and we can actually see how much each of the individual solar panels is producing. This is the Enlighten Manager software. Here is my garage, and this represents all the solar panels. And down here is a chart of overall, overall how much power we made today. If I just scrub through it, you can see that uh, the sun comes out, we produce more power, there's a big jump up, and then the sun eventually goes down. So let's take a look at this uh, from the beginning. So if we take a look actually at the uh, couple of photos that I took, uh, this is what it looked like at about 8.30 this morning. The sun was just uh, peeking up over the hill. We're starting to get a little sunlight on, but there's been uh, no melting going on at all. Again, it was cold. It was like uh, six or eight degrees. Um, so I wouldn't expect a lot of this to melt off uh, if all that snow was still there. But since this is at 8.30, let's take a look at what's represented at 8.30. We'll... Right here... Okay, 8.30 a.m., very, very little power being created at the top row, no power whatsoever, the middle and the bottom rows, uh, just a very, very small amount of power, and that, that kind of jives. If we look at this, um, a little bit of sun on the middle and bottom rows, but that top row is sort of half blocked by snow all the way across, and that's going to completely kill the power to that entire row but we're just making a little bit here. So now if we take a look at the next photo, here's one that I took at about quarter after 10 this morning. Uh, now it's a nice bright sunny day. You can still see that there's uh, snow over those top panels, but let's see how this looks on how much energy we're making. So if we go up to 10.30, or 10.15 uh, rather, now we're still making hardly any, any amount of power on those uh, top solar panels. They're still blocked by that snow, but the middle and the bottom, they're actually producing power. They're not doing uh, really bad at all, considering that they still have a lot of splotchy snow on them. And if you look, they're, they're all kind of making a little bit different amounts of power. Uh, this is actually where microinverters come in handy with snow uh, because they are operating all independent of each other. Um, I have a friend who has a solar system that, um, you know, I like to compare my power to his after a snowstorm because his, with his traditional uh, series string, 
uh, he always produces considerably less power than I do after a storm, and I think it's mostly because of the inverters. If we take a look at the next photo here, uh, this is at about uh, 20 after 12, so we're a little bit after noon. And the big difference here is that some of the snow has slid down from the top. Unfortunately, that means it's now kind of blocking some of the middle row here. So let's go to about 1220 on our chart. And right around in here, we can see now the middle row actually isn't making much power, but uh, we're finally getting some power in the top row here. Now, our next photo is when I said, you know what, I'm just going to get the roof rake out again. I'm going to clear the rest of the snow off. And as you can see, this is pretty darn clear. There's still a few very minor splotches of snow around, but, but almost completely clear. Uh, this was at 1.20 p.m. So now let's take a look again at 1.20 p.m. And, well, on the chart, it's, it's, it's really obvious. It's a big spike up in power from about 1.5 kilowatts to four and three quarters kilowatts that's just a huge jump in the amount of power and that was only clearing off that much snow um so i basically got you know three or four times the amount of power just by clearing the rest of that snow off that is that's pretty considerable we got that big big spike in there next photo um about 3 p.m uh, this here is actually the shadow of my house. This is the shadow of the chimney pipe. And it, it at this time of year, end of January, it actually blocks all the way up into this third row of panels. That's kind of neat if we look on the chart. Right here, we actually see that same shape of those shadows. You can see how this here lines right up with this here. So all the other panels, of course, they're still producing plenty of power but the ones that are shaded, uh, the power is cut down. And then, of course, uh, through the rest of the day, um, it's, I mean, it's almost sunset. We're just dropping down power very, very quickly. So uh, the last photo that I have that I want to show you here, uh, this is about quarter after 4 p.m. There's only a glancing amount of sunlight still on the solar panels here. And, yeah, I'm, I'm producing very very little at this point um you know not even worth recognizing the big thing though for the day is how much total power did we make so today we made 13.3 kilowatt hours well electricity at my house is worth about 13 cents per kilowatt hour so if we just pull out the calculator and we multiply our 13.3 kilowatt hours produced times 13 cents per kilowatt hour we made about a dollar seventy-three cents worth of electricity. So the big question then is: Is it worth it? Was it worth it to make a dollar seventy-three cents worth of electricity for scraping off all those solar panels? And I guess the answer is: It depends. I think the biggest "it depends" for me is just risk. Um, am I going to hurt myself doing this? Uh, here, I can use the roof rake from the ground. I don't have to get on the roof. I don't have to get on a ladder. It's pretty safe. But if I had to get up on the roof, if I had to get up on a ladder, even a step ladder to get the top of that third row, that's uh, that's enough risk. You know, a person could slip, fall, hurt themselves, break a leg, break a wrist, something like that. I don't want to do that for a dollar seventy-three cents. But if I can just clear it from the ground. It's going to be sunny the next day and I'm making power. I think I'd definitely do it. And of course, it's going to be different for everybody. Maybe you're a complete diehard. You want to get every little bit of sunlight that you can. Uh, you want to really live within your means, producing all the electricity that you use. Um, some of the other things to consider are what type of snow it is. Um, in my case here, I knew the snow was not going to simply melt off. Another big part of it too, uh, was actually at least getting some of the snow off because I knew it was going to be bright sunny weather the second day um, if I at least got some of the snow off um, that allowed some of the heavier stuff that was up there to melt and start sliding off and that wouldn't have happened at all if I didn't get at least some of the snow off. Um, the temperature definitely matters. How steep your roof definitely matters. So what about you? How is it at your place? Um, do you rake snow off your solar panels? Do you not? Do you uh, have some other approach? Uh, let us know, you know, uh, right, in, right in the comments. Let us know what you do. And of course, as always, subscribe, comment, 
like, uh, check us out over at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.